All right. You guys want to get into the monster rain thing? Or do you want to talk about the stupid hunters? <laughs> this is amazing. Uh, that's how white people kill each other, by the way. Yeah. See, black guys can go knifing and, you know, beating each other up and stuff. But white people, we know how to get the job done as far as killing people uh, randomly go. Yeah, there's definitely a difference between uh, black people killing and, and white people killing. Definitely. Well, here it is, Anthony. It comes out of Wisconsin. Five, five slain and deer hunter feud. Five. A feud. Because they're armed. It's, it's amazing. Listen what they were fighting over. A fight among deer hunters over a tree stand. You in my tree stand. You know, they get those tree stands like, I don't know, 10, 12 feet off the ground. Well, sometimes yeah, lower. I don't know. They sit in there. And they sit in there all morning long and all that. They cover themselves long. with deer piss. Right. And then uh, oh. wait, wait for a deer to come by. And then uh, blast them from the tree stand. They spend hours and hours and hours up in these things. And and there's certain stands that are in very good spots, like where deer come to walk by to get to the water hole or, or eat or something. So they're very coveted to these hunters. Ugh, just a bunch of dickheads sitting in a thing waiting for some animal yeah. to walk by so they can shoot it. Just really annoys Dressed me. Dressed in camo. Yeah. Ugh. Going to out, out fox them. Uh, yeah, it bugs me. Well, there's five less hunters today. Good. A fight among deer hunters over a tree stand wound up leaving five people dead and two others critically injured, officials said yesterday. And I'm hearing now there's more coming out on on this story that more people could have died, but the guy ran out of ammo. Really? This is what I'm hearing. The deadly violence began shortly after a, a hunting party saw other hunters occupying their tree stand. All right, now you come up to your tree stand that you're all psyched to get into and uh, shoot some deer. And uh, you see it's taken by some other hunters. So what do you do? A fight uh, broke out between the two sides, and shootings followed. Wait, isn't this the Pistons Pacers yeah, thing? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you don't want to fight with when everyone is armed with high-powered rifles. You don't want a fight starting. All right, uh, but the incident didn't deter other hunters in the area from hunting. We're all old, dyed-in wool hunters, said 72-year-old Bill Wagner. We wouldn't go home because of this, but we will keep it in our minds. Wait, wait, he won't go home because... No, well, other hunters shooting? in the area. Oh, in the area. Everyone, you know, the news spread, and uh, wow, there's five people dead in blah, blah area over there, but I don't care. I'm going to continue hunting anyway here. I guess it was a good deer stand if he was able to pick off five of them, and they didn't hit him. He uh, he had the high ground. I don't know if it's one guy or if... Uh, That's the story I read in the other paper. It said it, it was one guy. One guy. One guy that did the shooting. Lost his effing mind. I don't know if you guys have heard the update, though. It wasn't a guy, actually. It was actually a deer in an orange cap, and he <laughs> suckered people in and just shot them. <laughs> <laughs> Bambi's got a gun. Yeah, that's... Uh, Bunch of hillbillies. Sure. It happens. It, it usually happens accidentally, though. Every year you hear, sure. you know, they're walking through the woods and uh, yeah. tripped. Oops. Rifle hits the ground. Or, or they're... Uh, I like the one where they... They saw something move and thought it was a deer, oh, it's just, and it winds up being the guy's son. Uh, and well, it's usually someone you hate. It's just a great excuse to kill somebody. Yeah. I was. I thought so, I was shooting at a deer. I was so into guns. I uh, still am. I, I love guns. I love shooting guns, but at targets and stuff. I'm not. I'm not the hunter guy. Yeah, I, no, feel, I know what you mean. I, feel, feel, <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> I like you know making big bombs, dressing in trench coats, going to school. <laughs> You know, I just like guns. Play in the back of your car with a little hole cut in the trunk. Yeah, that too. Sure, sure. <laughs> sitting in Washington. <laughs> sitting and just waiting. Take Hi, Boo Boo! <laughs> <laughs> just take a few pot shots. We were, uh, we, we used to, I, when I lived in California, all of my wacky stories, by the way, come in California. Come from California. Uh, we were out in the Mojave Desert. We used to go out in the desert and just camp. Me, the, my father, brother, these uh, the other families that we used to hang out with, all Mexicans, the Reyes family. How old were you when you got your first gun? Oh, uh, it was my 12th birthday. Yeah, 12th birthday. I got a, uh, what the hell did I get? Nice little Ruger six-shooter, western style, wore it on hip. Mm, nice, low-slung holster. You walked That's around great. with a loaded gun at 12? Uh, well, 12, 13, around there. It was it was because we used to ride ride fence they called it ride fence we had about thirty five hundred acres or thirty five thousand acres uh, that had cattle on it and I used to have to ride the the uh, barbed wire fence and then patch it up because the motorcycle guys used to come through and cut the fence and uh, when you're up there in, in that you I was fully armed had a uh, 
a Winchester thirty thirty on in the scabbard and had my little my little six shooter on my hip. A little skinny not, Anthony on a oh horse with a with a little gun. A motorcycle guy guys never screwed with me. <laughs> Why would they cut the fence? Uh, to get their motorcycles through. Oh. They would cut the fence and then ran, <clears throat> continue on their way because it was like great motocross up there. But, you know, then you know, all of a sudden your, your cattle gets out. So I was armed to the teeth. And uh, it was fun, you know, shooting cactus and rattlesnakes and stuff like that. We went out into Mojave Desert where we also had dune buggies, guns, and tequila. And uh, we are a bunch of kids just drinking and shooting. It was really... <laughs> But thank God everyone was safe. Oh, wait. No, everyone wasn't safe. I'm so bummed I never got to meet your father, man. He's, oh, he was he's insane. He sounded like an unbelievable guy. He was a madman. It was Just, a, it was a, it was a, <laughs> No parenting whatsoever. No, Gotta it was a love carnival. It. I'll tell you, though, as a guy between like 13 and 17 years old, it was the place to be. I was going to say, perfect, right? No responsibility and just all excitement, adventure, and fun. Whatever you wanted to do. One day he just uh, went out and bought a doom buggy. You know, some days there wasn't food to eat, but <laughs> he had a goddamn doom buggy, and it was a pisser, you know? You're driving that thing around. You're 14 years old, uh, wheeling around a doom buggy. Went out into the desert. Guns everywhere. All co- We're all wearing guns. And uh, this one kid... Why would you go out to the desert just to party and uh, ride the dune buggies? Yeah, just and to spend about a week, shoot 10 Shoot at targets, days out. maybe? This guy, Juan Reyes, had a silver mine out there. It was uh, an old, like from the 40s, a silver mine, but it had a little mining shack. And we used to just camp out there and shoot and drink and, you know, hang out and drive the dune buggies around. And uh, this guy, Juan Reyes, had this old six-shooter. And it was the type that had no real safety on it. The firing pin was directly on the hammer that you cock back. Sure. And the new ones don't have that. The trigger has to be pulled, and the hammer has to fall. The old ones, if the hammer fell and the trigger wasn't pulled, it still went off. And worse yet, you had a quarter cock it, which is kind of pull the hammer back, to load it. Because you had to spin the cylinder around. So he's putting the bullets in. The thing's quarter cocked. You ever hear go off half cocked? It's kind of what it means. Don't go off half cocked. He's loading it up. He raises this thing. The hammer falls. It's pointing right at his eight-year-old son. Boom! Bullet goes right in his left shoulder, above his heart, and right out the back. I'm standing right there. I lo- I'm looking right at the kid when it hits him. How close were you to the kid? I was about as close as I am to you right now, about four feet away. Wow. So I'm look, and I happen to be looking at him when this happened. Hits him right there. He turns immediately white. This tube, it looked like a plastic tube of blood, came out. It was shaped perfectly round, like a water fountain. Came shooting out of his, what I thought, chest. I didn't even know it was his shoulder because it was uh, close to his heart. Comes shooting out. He goes, like, uttered something and fell right down to his knees. I'm like, holy shit, I just saw his father kill this, his son right there. And the, the father just lost his mind. Bye bye. Meanwhile. Didn't you say the blood just kind of like started? It did, like a tube. And oh, yeah, yeah. It came I'm pumping sorry, I was out thinking of something. It just went like whoosh, whoosh, whoosh. So the father's like, oh my God. Like everyone just freaked out. It was a hell of a scene to be part of. Was this in the woods now? Oh, let me tell you where we were. Grab a little map, people. This was uh, between Barstow, California and Needles, Arizona. There's a little old highway that runs between it, and we were 50 miles in on dirt roads off the highway. 50 miles in. Before you get to the highway that takes you another whatever it is to Barstow or Needles, they decided to go to Needles, uh, Arizona, to go to the hospital there. But they just loaded them up in the pickup truck, packed ice on them, uh, wrapped it up, and took off. And uh, hours later, I mean 10, 12 hours later... The cops came back to do a little investigation because it was a shooting. They came back with guys that were just armed like crazy because they had no idea what was happening out here. Group of guys in the Mojave Desert, there's a shooting. They're thinking cult or something. Yeah, they came out of those. They had uh, big uh, uh, suburbans, and they just came out of there like, you know, everybody come out of the mining shack. Everyone, please come out of the mining shack. We want to see everybody's hands. Did a little investigation. Little Charlie Reyes uh, lived. Uh, it was in his shoulder, and uh, that was that was that. But it was the first and only time I ever saw someone get shot. Thought he was dead too. That looked like just a heart shot. What did you do? His after whole that? shirt. Turned. Did you just run away and 
hide, cry? I mean, what did you do? It was uh, like we were all shaken, like freaked out. So we went in and uh, just did massive shots of tequila. <laughs> You're 12. <laughs> yeah. No, I was. I think I was 13 or 14 or something. All right. But yeah, that makes it better. When did you lose touch with Charlie Reyes? Uh, when I came back to New York, probably about 17 years old. And you never saw there. him again? No, I saw him uh, not since then. No, oh. but he was fine. You know, they had a little brace on him, and and it, it went in and right out. It was a 22, so it wasn't like a 38. Take his little little eight year old arm off. But to see a little eight-year-old kid just, like, hit his knees and go, I'm like, he said something like, I'm going to it. Like, holy shit, that wow. kid just got shot. If you slow it down, it was probably, hey, I'm shot, you dumb wetback. <laughs> 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 holy shit. You ever see a fucking head come apart like that? <laughs> hey, we worked him over with the butt of the shotgun. <laughs> <laughs> Made him hop around on one foot. <laughs> That's oh. how the gook laughs. Hey, uh, go get that big, hairy, creepy crawler from the ammo dump and put it on his gunshot wound. <laughs> uh, and the cops came through, went through some paperwork, said, no, this is important. This is important. And then it blew up. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all love little Charlie Reyes. <laughs> <laughs> hey, uh, Jim, what's up? <laughs> Charlie Reyes was a water walker. <laughs> <laughs> She's probably the one that did fucking Charlie Reyes. <laughs> Through the whole mining camp for Charlie. <laughs> and Sal. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. Jesus, I got nothing of all that. <laughs> uh, uh, good luck, Jim. Go ahead. Uh, you missed an important part of the story. Well, wait, which story? Anthony's story or the hunting story? I don't think I don't, you were there, I'm, sir. I'm yeah. 20 minutes late, but fucking the guy in Wisconsin who killed everybody? Right. Oh, the hunter that killed five. His name is Chai Vang. He's a chink. Oh, really? He's the only chink in Wisconsin. Oh, <laughs> a chink. He, probably, he just panicked, I guess. I think it's an Asian. Yeah, sir. It's Asian not... American, sir. I don't think we need the racial uh, epithets. Who the fuck are you kidding? <laughs> <laughs> this is Boston, after all, Come Anthony. Come on, it let, is Boston. Let right, them sir. be racist. Who They're, the fuck are you kidding? Right. It's in their blood. Let them be. Jesus. Right, you're, not gonna, got... you're not going to yeah, convince this guy. Is there guy. an area for the Chinese up there in Boston? No. Uh, yeah, New Hampshire. <laughs> 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 <laughs>